Hey, it's Mark Podolsky of The Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got Landon A.I. Harris. Landon, how are you? Doing well, Mark. Good to see you. We've got your partner in crime, Taria, putting in the reps, Harris. Taria, how are things? Things are great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Can't complain. We've got Eric, the technician, Peterson. Eric, how are things in beautiful Franklin, Tennessee? It's feeling like fall. It's Does it feel cold. like fall? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I missed that. <laughs> I know, yeah. Poor, poor land in, 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 in Taria in, in beautiful Northern California. We're all... We all a feel bo- so a bad. Boring right? mid seventies, so boring. So boring. I know, I know. Like, what's a cloud, Landon? We'll, we'll, you know. <laughs> I haven't seen rain? one in a while. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we have our special guests, Chris and Lauren Palsgrove, who have just completed not just flight school but also coaching, and these are always our favorite podcasts because we get to hear. From their journey, it's like a, a girl that geeks on steroids. So we'll all go around and, and ask a, a question, but I'll ask the first one. So Chris, okay. Lauren, first of all, how what made you guys even think about land investing and how did you find the land geek? Yeah, so that, that comes down to me. I've always had a bug of real estate investing since probably late high school years, I had a boss that invested in real estate and uh, he really just was like, Hey, I I don't make all my money running this lawn care business. I make all my money in real estate. And that put a bug in my ear. I looked at all different kinds of real estate. I mean, we've, we've done long-term rentals, we've done short-term rentals and I've listened to, I don't know how many thousands of hours of podcasts, but a lot and a lot of different ones and bigger pockets was on there. Uh, in the early days. And I think um, it was just hearing the concept of land invest- land investing multiple times from different people that just kind of drew me in. It finally clicked. And I was like, oh my goodness, you don't have to deal with tenants. You don't have to deal with people not paying the rent. And if they don't pay, you can just take it back after a certain amount of time. This could work. Um, and so I think I ended up buying a course from another another land investor and got into it, I think in August of 2020, I think it was like a $1,700 course. I think I turned around and flipped that first property in four months or something like that and made 10 grand, I think. So proof of concept and off to the races. Lauren let me do it all. So that was helpful. <laughs> I, I learned early on to get out of his way because I'm, I'm the cautious, steady person, like, oh, maybe we should hold off on this. And we had been doing a short-term rental for a while. And so at that point, I'd seen proof of concept and Chris just taking something, running with it. And so when he mentioned land investing, I was like, okay, well, I don't know anything about this, but go for it. Um, So yeah, he spent his first or the first over a year doing the land investing on your own. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think it was probably a year, a year or so into it that, I mean, it was nice to flip a flip one or two pieces of land for a few grand cash, but I, I really wanted something that was sustainable and that was an actual business that we could rely upon for income, not just like every few months, maybe we get a deal. Um, And I somehow got turned on to land geek from that and I think I bought the toolkit pretty quickly because it's like, I know it works and let's see what this this one looks like. And then I think December of 21, yeah. I convinced Lauren, hey, we should join flight school. And it was like, I think I, I think it was the day or the day before the next <laughs> class started that we had this conversation. She's like, okay, let's do it. Um, so we made the investment in flight school and learned kind of the systematic way of doing it all. Uh, which was helpful. I mean, it was helpful for us going into it, at least definitely for me having kind of a base level of knowledge of like, this works. Like I wasn't mm-hmm. questioning at all in flight school. Is this going to work? 
is anybody going to buy this land? Yeah. I knew that. I just wanted to know the systems, the processes, all the different resources to really make it into a business. Um, so then coaching was a pretty obvious next step after that, after going to boot camp. So yeah, boot camp definitely fired us up. We were like, okay, we've tossed around coaching. We've seen other others from our graduate class in flight school who are doing this. And we were like, oh, should we take the plunge? And it was after boot camp in 2022 that we were like, this is obvious. Next step, like, this is what we want to do. This is something that we really want to be a long term solution for our family and just solution for us to have a really good and fulfilling life and be able to also give that to others. So, yeah. I love it. I love the journey. Well, Landon, what, what question do you have for them? Wow. Um, really cool. Um, hearing you guys story and just kind of watching you guys kind of progress through this, um, just instant land investing. Um, so actually, so the first question that comes into my mind is because Taria and I have been together and we went through this process, I, I'm always interested to hear kind of what your relationship is like going through this together and like, how do you guys balance it? Are there any roles that you take? Um, you back off. What What do you guys, how does that look with you guys? Yeah, that's a good question. Sure. All right, I'll start. Um, so obviously <laughs> I was one that had to get out of Chris's way. So he is the visionary. He will take something, execute on it. He's, uh, you know, an engineer by mind too. And so just how he thinks about things completely different from me. I'm project manager, daytime job. And um, again, steadiness person. I love relationships. I love building relationships and talking with people, but I am not the visionary. I will prevent the visionary from functioning well if I uh, <laughs> sit and think on too much. And so, um, yeah, I think in our relationship and how we approach our, our business and just life in general is very complementary to each other. So I'll give my piece of it and then you can maybe give your, your insight too. But um, for us, we really had to establish, okay, you know, Chris was already two years into the land business at the time that we started coaching. I obviously had gone through flight school. We also did a move across country in that time. We had, we have three kids. We had a year old, um, our youngest was a year old at the time that we moved. So it was just a huge change season um, right before we entered coaching and when we were in flight school. And so flight school really helped me understand the concept of building a business, seeing what Chris was doing and, and being able to have conversations with him and be like, oh, okay, so you're saying this and now like now it's clicking. I understand why you're saying this. I may not be in it day to day, but it clicks. And from a project management standpoint, that's enough for me to be like, okay, I can ask a question that maybe will help us move forward or, or listen to him. And I'm not just swimming or trying to swim in his sea of knowledge. Um, so yeah, kind of fast forward through that when we entered coaching initially, it was, am I going to be doing all of this? How much am I going to be involved in it? And as we went through the year and we had Eric as our coach, Thanks, Eric, um, for being up with us. And um, it was, it became more evident where my strengths were. And that was with building relationships with people, really establishing community, really, um, you know, I love talking with people about our land business. I have enough knowledge to talk about that. And I really like to tell them about what we're doing. You know, we want to bless others with that too. And so, yeah, that's kind of my role in it is... Mm -hmm talking more about it with others and, um, you know, talking with potential investors, talking with just people in general who are curious about it or might want to get out of their nine to five, or maybe want to add to their nine to five. And so, well, not add to, but, you know, concept of not have to depend solely on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd echo that the relationships are big. <laughs> that's, that's an area where I can do it if I have to, but I definitely prefer to be more in the nitty gritty of details and getting, getting stuff done, getting the business functioning. Um, I think the other big thing that Lauren offers, she said getting out of the way, but 
it's not just her getting out of the way. It's really her cheering me along and encouraging me. I mean, we had a conversation just the other day where she was like, um, it was just something about, I can't get too in depth into something. I can't spend too much time on something because I'll just kind of lose track and need to do something else to stay excited. So I can't spend 40 hours a week working on the land business. I needed to have other things as well. And she's like, well, start another business, like do something. I And that vote of confidence yeah. was, I don't know, we've been married 10 years now and uh, that that wouldn't happen in year one for sure. So yeah. it's, it's cool to hear that and hear the kind of the process and the growth that we've been through together and all of it. Yeah. Nice. That's, nice. That's awesome. It's a really good question, man. And yeah, nice. definitely built our trust in each other a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's always, I'm always curious on it. It's, it's so different for, from couple to couple and just sometimes even just partner to partner who's ever working with it. So really cool. Nice. Yeah. The, the family that, you know, buys and sells land together stays together. <laughs> Could be said. Could be yeah. said like that. <laughs> For sure. Uh, Taria, what's your question? So, uh, Chris, you at least had land knowledge before you joined our community. So um, Landon and I had zero land knowledge, right? So I'm just wondering for those who are out there who think, well, I need to know this or I need to know that before I jump in and get going or maybe uh, there's an advantage either way. But so can you just kind of talk about how it helped you or how you think others can join, even if they don't have real estate knowledge? Yeah. I mean, I think with the knowledge that I had and even with some of the systems and tools that we use like GIS, like I, I did that in my career. I used that, that software in my career and it really just jump started it. It made it faster, but anybody can learn all of the things that we use, like all of the softwares and tools and the way that we look at things, anybody can learn these. Um, YouTube has been, and I'm sure for everybody on this call, everybody listening, YouTube will teach you just about anything um, or just a simple Google search. Uh, so I think it was definitely helpful to have some real estate knowledge and also to like looking at it. Like I could spend hours looking at a county GIS map just figuring out like, Oh, how does this property get access? And oh man, what if I was, was able to buy all of these properties? And um, that stuff's cool, but anybody can do it. And the and the way that the program is set up too, with you know the toolkit, kind of do it yourself, and then flight school, getting a, a helping hand, and then coaching, really in depth, growing something. Mm -hmm. um, there's really an opportunity for anybody that wants to do it. I one thing I was thinking as you know I was thinking about being on this is really it just takes showing up every day. Mm -hmm. So if you have persistence and grit and want to want to build something, you just have to do one task every single day. Like no matter how, how cruddy you feel or how cruddy you feel about your own business, like you just show up every single day and keep pushing forward and you're going to find success. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. I, lo I love it. I love it. Uh, the technician, these are, these are, uh, you know, your your students, Eric. How's I've it seen feel? these guys before? You see them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris and Lauren, happy to have you guys on the podcast today. Great to see you again. Um, you know, obviously through what you've already talked about, we all know you've you've kind of been at this for a while. You've you're seasoned, we'll say, right? So at this point. What would you say is your favorite part about the land business? And what is your least favorite part about the land business? You want to start off? Um, <laughs> so favorite part is actually something that would have surprised me, say, three, four or five years ago. Having the opportunity to bring a other people along on the journey with us, mm -hmm. whether that be people that have invested in our business, um, whether that be people that we've been able to buy or sell land to or from. And, and then really the people that I've been able to bring onto the team, um, I'm really working hard on getting myself out of the day to day and bringing on people to help purchase properties, bring on people to help sell properties and market them and hearing their excitement 
and hearing how they're excited to be part of what we're building. That's probably my favorite part at this point. Um, least favorite thing about the land business. Uh, in the early stages of it, and even still a little bit now, trying to keep all the plates spinning is, is really difficult. Because, uh, you know, you focus on buying land and then you've got a bunch of land and then you got to turn around and try to sell all that land if you're the one mainly doing it. And then the problem I've had more recently is bringing on a couple sales assistants and running out of land, not actually running out, like there's still stuff in inventory, but it'd be really nice if we had another 10 properties in inventory, but I was focused on getting them hired and trained up and not as focused on, you know, making sure mail is getting out when it needs to. Um, so still in these early stages of keeping all the plates spinning is probably the least favorite part. Yeah. So I, I've mentioned this, I really like the community. And so the Land Geek community has been really awesome. I've loved um, boot camp. I really liked the VIP room. And even since, I mean, I, I text with some of the people that are also in the community. And I think the really cool part of that um, is you have people who are there with you in that stage or a similar stage. You have people who have gone before you. So you can kind of tap into that or just have some of those casual conversations over dinners, you're walking someplace. And um, also those that are not yet where you are that you can encourage along to. And I think that's one of the coolest things is just the really awesome community through the business that we've had. We're not alone in it. Like we don't feel like, okay, we have to figure everything out on our own. Um, we, we really have such awesome people that we get to invest in, but also who have invested in us. And so probably one of my favorite parts is that, um, Lee's favorite part, I think for me is, okay, Chris is visionary. He gets everything going. He gets the plate spinning, but the plates aren't necessarily in an organized fashion for my brain. And so, um, I think the more difficult part for me is just, you know, everything, um, everything that he has spinning, trying to make sure that I'm keeping track of things enough so that I can hear what he's saying, listen to him, see where we maybe need to encourage moving forward in an area or I need to be encouraging him more. And so I say it's least favorite because I think that can sometimes be the, the most tension right there is just, well, where are you doing all this? Or how is all of this going right here? What, what did you change with this? And it's also... I don't know. I find a lot of positivity in the probably least favorite part too, and that it just helps us grow more and communicate better. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love that attitude. Mm. Like, you know, the, the obstacles make you stronger. Yeah. Right. And and they help you grow. And it's, uh, I was, I was reading a, a quote today. Um, it was an FDR quote. Let me see. I just had it. Well, it's not here or there. But it was basically like um, something like, you know, uh, smooth seas make for a poor sailor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you yeah. need those rough <laughs> waters uh, to get good at, at anything and, and have that, uh, you know, the, go through that, that fire. And the fact that you're doing it together, I think it makes it even, even more special as well. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I've got a question for you. What's been your favorite deal? So I actually have two and they're very recent ones. And it's not so much the deal, though the deals were both great as it is how it was done. So I recently, with like a month ago, hired two sales assistants uh, who will eventually be sales reps, like full on commission sales reps. And they've both now sold a property. And so those deals are awesome where it's like, I never spoke to the customer. I didn't have to worry about if I was letting the customer down by not getting back to them in a timely manner. Um, both of the girls that I hired are awesome and they have both sold the property now, which is pretty awesome. Um, and I'll just run through the, the numbers really quickly. One of them I think was a buy for $1,200, got it off a mailer and it's four parcels. Um, so total purchase of 1200 and we sold it for 6,000 on terms. Um, so awesome bread and butter deal. And then the other one was 
was really cool. And it's kind of the direction that I've been trying to go for the past year in terms of size of property that we sell or like uh, size of financing of it all. That was a buy for eight, eight to nine, something like that. And then a sell for 40,000 on terms. So uh, all, both awesome deals, ones that have been actually sitting for a little, little bit of time, even though they're both great, uh, but having somebody else do it, that was awesome. That's yeah, fantastic. You, so I remember you had a flight and, or you had, I don't know if you were in between flights or something like that. And you texted me and you were just like, oh, property just sold and I didn't have to do anything to sell it. <laughs> and it was just, it was so exciting to get that text from him because we've heard it from others. Again, those that have gone before us, those that are there. And to hear that from him, I know he can sell properties and I know he can sell them really well, but to hear that someone else sold it and just, mm -hmm. oh, so exciting. Yeah. And to celebrate that victory with them because they were both yeah. really excited, mm -hmm. uh, obviously. So, yeah. So that was, those are my favorites. Yeah. Th th those are so cool. Landon, you get, you have another question? So I'm listening and I'm like, you guys have got some great uh, stories going in. And I'm wondering, because I hear a little bit more from you guys, it's more of a, to me, I don't, I don't know that this business is just about the money for you guys, but is it, are there any other things that are measurable, like of, of how you're succeeding or in your, in your success, I guess, as you're doing this business? Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I don't know if it's yet measurable, but kind of the way that I think we view life and yeah, the way that we view life, it's not necessarily about making a bunch of money and buying all the things that we want. It's about living a good life. Um, so using the time that we have really, really well. Uh, finances are just a tool for that. Mm -hmm. right. So I don't, I don't care if it takes you know, 10 or 20 or $30,000 to live a good life a month or a year, that doesn't matter. It's really about living intentionally each and every day. Um, I don't know yet how to measure it, uh, but certainly, you know, bringing people onto the team is part of it. I think in, so we, we've written a vivid vision for our company as well. And one of the other things that I mentioned in it is giving back. So we have a goal and I think it's, giving back $100,000 over the next three years just to different local charities and churches and missions organi organizations and things that we see as really important and valuable. Um, so I guess that's that's one way to measure it is people that we've impacted. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I think, um, I mean, just in general, every every anniversary we measure just everything from that last year. Like we look at it, we really just take into account everything that, you know, God's really done in our life and that we've been blessed with. And um, I think that is one of those things where measuring it and Landon, I, you know, I'm a project manager, so I have to be careful <laughs> how much I try to manage Chris. Um, <laughs> part of that is the measurables. Like I, um, the measurements are definitely something that as I get more um, involvement in things, I, I'm sure that's going to come more. But I think, you know, we have several investors that we now get to benefit with these deals and with these, you know, this awesome business. And that's really cool to see. Um, you know, we have three core values that are just we talked about it for our family, who we are, and, you know, it's hard work. And so we will always work hard and strive to, to be very intentional with our time. And it doesn't mean hard work has to be, you know, angering work or disappointing work or anything. It can be really encouraging and uplifting. And, it, and we think, you know, we're made to work in that. And we really want to be generous. Generosity is our, our second one. So we want to make sure that, you know, we're stewards of our time, our talents and our treasure. And we want to be really intentional with how we use those. Um, and then hospitality. We love to care for others and, and care for those in our community around us. And 
it allows us to do all of those things by having the having our own business. And so we measure also by that, Landon, is are we aligned with this? Are we continuing to do this? And, and how are we continuing to you know be good stewards as things increase or as we have more capacity in areas? So it's so good. You guys are that's awesome. You guys it sounds like you guys have your why figured all the way out. I love that. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, it's been it's so, been a really cool journey with that. Come yeah, on. I would say it's ever evolving though. It is. I don't wake up each day and know exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely we're still figuring things out each and every day. But mm-hmm. you know, there's there's kind of a cardinal direction that we know to go. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that so that good. that makes you know having good judgment so much easier when you look at your core values and you say, well, this is is this within our core values or not? Mm-hmm. And I think for those of you listening and you don't have a vivid vision, there's a great book by Cameron Harrell that is called Vision Vision, Vivid Vision, and and just gives you the template on, on how to create that and and really uh, fortify your why and, mm-hmm. and and keep you you know in that direction. But Taria, what question do you have for Chris and Lauren? So my question surrounds uh, just the coaching program in general. So what was the thought process? Because you obviously had some success, right? With, with even before the toolkit, you got into flight school. So what was the catalyst where you're like, nope, we're going into coaching and how did that revolutionize or change your business? Do you care if I? Sure, Sure. go ahead. So I think, you know, Chris had been building things and he had a lot of areas where he was successful in it and he had seen that. But I think- where we were last year um, going into boot camp was okay. Chris left his full time job when we moved um, across the country. And so he was focused on the land business. But then it was like, okay, there are all these parts and all these components to it. And I think it naturally felt like, okay, we should go towards coaching because it gives that direction and it allows you to really be a hundred percent in this, but also have someone else who's in it with you while, you know, I still work full time. So I don't, you know, I'm not actively next to Chris, like, yeah, you got this, or we should do like, I think that was a huge part, Mm -hmm. at least in my mind was okay. Chris has someone else who can help to kind of guide that and guide where he's thinking of going. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I would mention too is coaching is an investment and so is the toolkit and so is flight school. And obviously, you know, the, there are different tiers of, of an investment um, and it was a big one, but I've just heard over and over again from people that have been really successful. It's just it, like they pay for coaches. Mm-hmm. They pay for shortcuts. That's essentially what coaching is. And these different educational programs are they're shortcuts to success sooner it's not that like we could do what we do in building a land business, but it would probably take longer and we'd have to hit our head against the wall a lot more times and try 10 more tools or softwares to figure out the one that works the best. It's, I mean, coaching brought way more value than we invested into it monetarily. Mm -hmm. I'm just a from the relationships, but B from all of the knowledge and the softwares and the guidance behind it. Um, So that's, that's, a big, big reason. It's just a shortcut it to to bring our our goal and aspirations of a, a really strong business sooner. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, lo- I love when people ask me, how much is coaching? I'm like, it's, it's it doesn't cost anything. It, it pays for itself. <laughs> yeah. It did. I mean, yeah. more more than that. And again, it doesn't even all come down to the money. So yeah. There's always been enough money that I've seen, at least in our lives. Yeah. We just look at things and we're like, this is awesome. Like 10 years of marriage, we're just like, look at the multiplication factors of this. And it's not just, again, monetarily. It's it's awesome to see what real estate investing does, especially real estate investing where you have no renters or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> So it's awesome to see that and the multiplication there, but it's also really cool to see just the multiplication that you get in so many other aspects of your life too. And so, yeah, I think it's just a really, 
yeah, amazing thing to look at that and look at the timeline and just see how, oh, wow. It's not just like, oh, let me add this little bit. The coaching added like just this huge multiplication factor onto it. And now we just see that ever increasing in our abilities to grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Eric, bring us home. All right. <laughs> um, so obviously we've heard you talking about your business and, you know, the different things that, that you have off your plate and um, your team that you're building, but I know you're not all the way that you're there yet, but you're getting close. So thus far, what, what has been the hardest thing to outsource for you guys, whether that's because it was hard to hire somebody, it was hard to train somebody. You just didn't want to let that thing go. You didn't think anybody else could do it. Like, what is it and 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 why? I'll start by saying there's not a single thing in the business, I don't think, that I would not be okay with letting go. If somebody else wants to do it all, if I can find somebody else to do it and just pay them in a way that makes sense, I'll do it. I, there's nothing I hold so dearly. Uh, the, probably the intake role, and I don't know if you would agree with that, <laughs> that but what I was thinking. the intake role of buying properties has just been a, a headache. Um, and I think I've yeah. got it. I've yeah. got someone who's really good now. Um, yeah. but I just foresee that continuing to be kind of a difficult point. Cause I don't want just one person I had to again. And then I just, I had to make a change. So I just, I'm down to one, but I don't want to just have one because mm-hmm. it's just a single point of failure, but that's been the most difficult uh, mm-hmm. is finding people that, that just want to do that. Cause it, at least in the way that our business functions, it's certainly not a full-time role mm-hmm. and you, it's enough of a specialized position, I guess, because you are speaking on the phone with people you it is helpful to have some sort of real estate knowledge or just the ability to learn quickly because you're mm-hmm. you're doing basic property research, at least how we have the role designed. So it's it's kind of unique and maybe it'd be easier now to find somebody that the housing has slowed down a little bit, but that was kind of the pool I was searching for. And I feel like at the time I was searching, a lot of those roles were just in housing and not necessarily available to do land, but that has definitely been the most uh, difficult part of it. Yeah, And that's my least favorite part of the business. So, Yeah, I agree. That has been, uh, you know, we started that process over a year ago. And um, like Chris said, we, we now have someone in the role that, you know, is a really good fit for it. Um, the cool part is with each time that we like Chris cycled had different changes with um, people that he was working with for that. He learned additional skills or different Mm -hmm. things that he wanted to do. So, okay, I'm going to record these trainings. So I no longer have to do a training every single day for two weeks straight or whatever it might be, or um, putting the vivid vision out there. That was huge in having a much, I don't know, much more aligned um, individual come into the role. Mm -hmm. Um, Just different things that, you know, positional contract, different things that he learned along the way and that I got to partner with that and partner with seeing him go through it. But yeah, that was definitely the, by far the most painful role. Yeah. And some of that, (laughs) the difficulty in it was probably a lot of my failings too. And the things I needed to learn about the role and what kind of expectations to have and having realistic expectations Mm -hmm. because from the first person I hired to now, probably the, I think I'm on six or seven. um, It's changed and my expectations have changed and the way that I've explained things have changed and the tools I've made available to them have changed. So uh, it's, it's all part of growing and, and learning how to run a business. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, I've got I've got one last question. How has this business changed your life or lives? I mean, tremendously. <laughs> um, you can start. I think I've started on a lot of these. Uh, I think for me, like Lauren said, I I left my full time <clears throat> job when we uh, moved from North Carolina to Illinois, and that was a a big step because it's. Relatively speaking, it's always been pretty easy for me to get good jobs and 
keep climbing the ladder um, almost to the point where a lot of the jobs I was just like, all right, I, I've done my job in 10 hours or 15 hours out of the 40. Like, what do I do with the rest of this time? Like, there's, there's nothing else to do. I'm bored. Uh, so I think for me, it's been nice to be separated from a job and not feeling like I'm getting paid for not doing anything for those certain hours, but to be able to spend the exact amount of time that I need to on the business, sometimes more, sometimes less, but really get to focus in and, and build something. And then with the rest of the time, go and do other things that interest me. They could bring money in or not, but go and pursue other things and uh, really just use all the time. Well, I think, I think there's part of a, or some of a theme in this podcast with us is uh, time is really important and the way that we use it is really important. Uh, So we want to make sure that we're using it really well. Yeah. And I think just to add on to that too, is time freedom also with our kids. So we like Chris and we actually have to do pick up soon, but um (laughs) Chris and I, like, we get to pick up our kids from school every day and we get to be really involved in just their day-to-day lives and be really intentional about that time with them. Um, you know, we've been able to travel places and, you know, Chris isn't within uh, any restrictions on time in that sense. I mean, you're still working when we go to places, but there's a lot more flexibility that he has with it. And so I think you're just, you're extremely intentional with that time with our kids, which, you know, that's, that's a huge blessing to them. And I get to also be more intentional as a result of the business and just changes that we've made with that. Um, So yeah, that's been awesome too. It's just getting to really know our kids and getting to spend the time with them. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. You two are just a gift. So this cool. podcast is just been a gift. So cool. They are. <laughs> they Very are. much so. Well, as is you know tradition, it is now time, and your mentorship has been great. But now we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Uh, I'll go first. Please, please okay. do. I, so by the strong encouragement of Chris, I started reading a whole lot more books and just, um, with that, who not how has been one of my favorite books. Um, because again, I think it goes back to relationships and people and just understanding that, wow. Okay. This other person has a significantly stronger skill set here. Why am I doing this? Or why would I try to tell them how to do this? Why can't I, instead set the vision for them or get the blockers out of the way for them. And I'm speaking like a project manager now, but I think who not how was phenomenal in that in us approaching it with the business. And I highly recommend that to anyone and everyone for any area of life you're wanting to apply it. Like it is a really cool book. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, overall, I would just say books. People don't read (laughs) enough books. Uh, I, I mean, there's so much knowledge condensed down into something that costs 10 or 15 or 20 bucks. I mean, it's, you get so much more value from it. Uh, If I had to say one specific book right now, and it kind of goes back to hiring people, at least for me is the E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And honestly, I, it took me a couple tries at that book to get through it. But when I got through it towards the end, he starts talking about positional contracts, which have really changed the, the, how we've done hiring. Um, our intake manager, and then also our sales assistants. We've used positional contracts with them, which just outlines the expectations, what success looks like in this role, what kind of personality things they need, qualities they need to have to succeed in it. And then really kind of like the, the very measurable aspect of it is the 30, 60, and 90 day goals. Like this is what success looks like at these points and getting to refer back to that. Yeah. with them and and whether they met it or not, you know, there could be some changes I need to make, not necessarily just them. And so being able to have a reference point of like, this is where you should be at this point. Why aren't you there? Is it something you, you did or is it something I did or didn't do? Um, so yeah, books are great. Read books. You all can see it. We have literally a bookshelf right here and Chris has 15 books stacked on his desk right in front of us. So 
Yeah, they're definitely a huge part of our our day to day and our uh, just like you literally get to be in the room just by opening up a book with the smartest people in the world. And so it's a pretty, pretty cool gift with that. Yeah. 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 It, it's so true. I, I remember hearing Robert Kiyosaki talking about someone robbing his house and he said, they didn't take the most valuable things. They left all the books. <laughs> and I, I thought, Oh, wow, that's, that's <laughs> so true. And it, you know, when I look at my own bookshelf, like you could pretty much take everything, but don't take the books. Yeah. Because I, I, I love these books. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but you know, today's day and age, it's so easy now to get new books, but that's it not is. here or there. But don't worry, Mark, Dirt Rich is one of the 15 piled was, on his. There. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lauren, the check is in the mail. thank you so uh this has been great my my tip of the week is learn more about chris and lauren go to their website uh groundedpropertiesland.com groundedpropertiesland.com this has been a podcast for the ages so much wisdom has been dropped Mm -hmm. by you guys and uh we're so appreciative and just so proud of of all that you've achieved. We've, we didn't even get into your numbers. Do you guys even know how many deals you've done since you started coaching? Or uh, school? I have a guess. I'm not looking at it right now, but we've, we've probably bought 50 or 60 properties and sold 40 to 45 of them is my guess. And that's yeah. from August of 2020 when we started until now. Fantastic. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and and on a part time basis. Well, not not for you, Chris, but now it's full time. But it was part time. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Nice. Amazing. Well, thank you guys again. Thanks for taking the time. I know you have to go pick up the kids, and uh, <laughs> out of be respectful and intentional with your time, I just want to thank the listeners and remind you: the only way we're going to get Chris and Laura to come back and tell us more of their journey and their growth. If you do three little favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review, support at the I'm going to send you one of Chris's top 15 favorite books, <laughs> a signed copy of Dirt Rich. All right. Are we ready to do this? Yeah. One, yeah. two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom. freedom. ring. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.